electrons. And in doing so, we created carbon dioxide because there's oxygen available. The electrons were, they made their way onto those little electron shuttles, the NAD, FAD, okay? And the whole process would start over with the next pyruvate coming in. In the meantime, from that Krebs cycle, all right, which is the next stage. So based on what literature you're looking at, it could be counted as the second or the third. For us, it's now the third stage. Um, when you mentioned like glycolysis is not a part of uh, the, like when it happened on its own, mm -hmm. it's anaerobic through slightly. Mm -hmm. When it takes part of it, so when it's a part of cellular respiration, where it's in step one, it's, it, it still produces lactic acid? No, it produces those pyruvates. The pyruvates get to go forward. So, if it's... If it's just strictly anaerobic fermentation, you get the two ATPs and a lactic acid. When we get to work in the presence of oxygen, meaning we're going to make the way to the mitochondria, the product at the that end product of the two pyruvates from glycolysis will go into the mitochondria. So it's normally aerobic. For the most part, where we work aerobically because it's more efficient. When you are demanding a huge amount of energy from your body at a particular time, like say um, you play sports or you run or you bike or something like that, in the beginning of that process, this is how your body makes energy. It's glycolysis. You're only getting the two um, ATP and you get a lactic acid. That builds up in your skeletal muscle cells and makes them sore. But under normal means, like those as we're sitting here right now, under normal means, we're working aerobically. Meaning, we're going to have the glucose molecule get split. We have the two pyruvates. The pyruvates go into the Krebs cycle, or into the mitochondria, go to the Krebs cycle, and the process gets all those little electrons, go to the electron transport chain, and we produce a huge amount of ATPs. Okay? So, those two pyruvates that made it to the mitochondria that now will begin to go to the Krebs cycle, which is in the matrix. So, think of here, 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 these little areas right here as the matrix. We are in the presence of oxygen. We're stripping off those hydrogens, like I just mentioned. We're getting electrons. We're producing CO2. And at the end of a cycle, at the end of that little cycle, you've made some more ATPs, but only about four. So the amount is still not great. What we did get, we got a ton of our electron carriers, NADs, FADs. And along with that, the H pluses. So at the end of that Krebs cycle, we have created quite a few electron carriers. We have created quite a few CO2s that now need to be breathed out. And now all of these little electron carriers can make their way to the electron transport chain. So that electron transport chain. And has everybody kind of got this idea in their head? Okay, let's blow up this mitochondria like we would see in a picture. All 
All right? So this is considered a double membrane organelle because we've got this outer one and now an inner one. So along this area, along these areas, we find those proteins. Do you happen to remember the little proteins being represented? The little blue dots came up and they got dropped off and they kind of showed that protein flipping and flipping and flipping. And as it did that, H pluses moved across the membrane. Does everybody remember that? Okay. So the last one was the one called ATP synthase. Do you remember that? So in all the little chains that you find, you find your little proteins and then you find that ATP synthase. You find your little chains, ATP synthase. Find your little chains, ATP synthase. And in the meantime, in the matrix where the Krebs cycle is occurring, you're getting all of those electron carriers. And those electron carriers make their way to the first protein and start dropping off those electrons. And as they drop off those electrons, hydrogen pluses make their way out here in between the two membranes. Is everybody with me? So, those electrons that are being brought in, they get dropped off, dropped off, dropped off, dropped off, dropped off. And as they bump down, move down, move down, move down, move down, they allow hydrogens to build up on one side of the membrane. Okay? So we are allowing H pluses to build up on one side of that membrane. This creates a concentration gradient. What do you remember about movement of molecules? Think back to diffusion and osmosis. Materials like to move from an area of what to what? From high concentration to low. So now the H pluses are in high concentration. The only way they get to balance is by flowing down that ATP synthase. Because this is now a chemical gradient, it's termed chemiosmosis. Osmosis because of movement, chemi because it's chemicals. But the term synthase, what does that mean? It is an enzyme that makes something. And it tells us what? ATP. As those H pluses get to move across that protein, that enzyme, when it comes out on the other side, I have now made ATP. Any, and as I bump down the electron transport chain, that electron that finally gets to the last protein, that electron gets accepted by oxygen, which will eventually work with some of the H's and make water and we get a little CO2. 
So at the end of that electron transport chain, we have produced the majority of our ATPs, roughly about 30 to 32. I have produced, I've used oxygen because each electron that has to bump down these proteins, if it's brought here first and then goes to this one, to this one, to this one, something has to accept that electron and it's oxygen that does. This is the point that we're using oxygen that we take in. And we have produced like 30 to 32 ATPs. The process as a whole, roughly 36 to 38 in between glycolysis, CREB, and electron transport. But electron transport has produced the most. This is kind of representing as that electron is brought in, H pluses move across and build up that gradient. The only way for those H pluses to move back across and balance is through synthase. The cells of your body are doing this 20 Four, seven. Every single chemical reaction, which is metabolism, if you guys remember that, okay, the cells need this. They have to have this. Anything that is going to deprive a cell of oxygen this process is going to stop. It will eventually cause death to that cell. And unless the process is reversed, the organism dies. Because our cells do not store ATP, pretty much it gets used as it's being made. This is the reason that with this process occurring, um, this is the reason that upon death, okay, rigor mortis sets in. Okay? Rigor mortis sets in about 8 to 12 hours after the time of death. Because that's the point that all oxygen available in the body and the production of ATP has completely stopped. So at whatever point that body, whatever position, okay, that it stops in, this is the reason things happen after the time of death and like people move okay literally before true funeral homes and, and stuff like that um it, it, people called it sitting up with the dead okay because the rigor mortis had sat in and a lot of times when that process completely ended Usually, whatever happened to, to the way that, that they had laid the body out, a lot of times that, that body <gasps> did this number. Okay? So, it, it's, it's the reason that bones might have to be broken to get them into the, the, the casket and stuff like that. Because it's at the point all ATP has stopped in the body. That takes about 8 to 12 hours after the time. Of 